discussing House of the Dragon. Uh, if I had to characterize or categorize a few of the greens, oh wait, I do have to. That's what's going to be the category of this video, or the, the, the topic of this video, rather. Special thank you to these individuals right here, because they're the ones who are responsible for these videos, right? So basically, YouTube has a hit campaign against me. Psych, no, I don't want to be that dramatic. But basically, what they do is if you type in House of the Dragon on YouTube, my video, whatever one I put out is the latest one, will show up, but only for a few hours. And then after that, it disappears. You have to scroll down by like six pages to get to some of my videos. So a way to combat that, instead of relying solely on YouTube ad revenue to be able to, uh, you know, pay for this kind of content, I have actually decided to just full on push my Patreon in every single video. So if you enjoy my content and you can't leave a tip or anything like that, the best thing you can do is just make sure you uh, leave a like and subscribe. That way you have your notifications turned all the way on. Um, but if you can, consider checking out my Patreon over on patreon.com slash Sir Hunt's Reviews. Alright, so one of my favorite characters on the side of the greens is Aegon II. Uh, a few quick things to know about him is that in the beginning of this story, right, um, well, when it really kicks off, right? Right before the Greens Council, right after his father, King Viserys I, dies, and his mother, Queen Alicent, keeps his father, King Viserys' death a secret, Aegon II is sort of reluctant in this role. Like, it's specifically mentioned that he says, hey, I, I don't want, I can't take the crown, I can't take the throne from my sister, what the hell are you doing? Everyone has already pledged fealty to her, right? And then eventually he's convinced to take the crown. And then when he takes it, he sort of just falls into the role of being a douche, right? One thing I will say of note is that Helena is asked infamously on the day of his crowning, when he's crowned in the dragon pit, she's asked, uh, Helena is his sister wife. She's going to be played on this series by Fia Saban. We haven't actually seen any official images in their costumes of the greens, which is kind of why I wanted to make this video, just to give uh, the average show watcher, anybody watching my videos, some more insight onto who they are. But basically, Helena's asked, where is your husband Aegon? And she's like, well, he's not in my bed. Basically insinuating that they have more of a brother-sister relationship as opposed to a husband loving relationship like they do their duty they have multiple kids they have twins right jahari and jaharis but Aegon too very much gets his pleasures el elsewhere and because of that it kind of makes me think of a little bit like Tyrion Lannister, but more so like Joffrey. Because over the course of this story, Aegon II is viciously maimed, and although his penis no longer works, he likes to watch people do it. And that's kind of like what Joffrey, what was hinted at with Joffrey on the TV show, is that he likes to watch those two whores do shit to each other. He does put a bolt through both of them, but ultimately, like, he likes to watch, and ain't nothing wrong with that. Another one of my favorite characters is obviously going to be Alicent herself. Now, she's going to be greatly misinterpreted on this show unless they do it correctly. Now, one of the benefits with Game of Thrones in the main series is when they're writing scenes for certain characters that either happened in the books and they're translating it or didn't happen in the books and they wanted to add some more depth to the story, is that they have cornerstones and pillars because we get to read the internal thoughts of each one of these POV characters. Like with Tyrion, his biggest pillar is that he was married to Tysha. Tysha was gang raped in front of him. And then in the end, he gang raped her too. He was a part of the fucking thing. And then he's like, his whole life is like trying to figure out where do whores go so he could go and find Tysha, right? It's really sad. But all of his character comes back to that same moment. And with Brienne, it's when she's called ugly, right? So when she, she's she got multiple suitors that come and see her throughout her life, and they all are basically, they want her title. She's Brienne of Tarth. They, they want to marry her for her lands and, and, and everything that comes with that. But she's ugly. She's hideous as fuck. She's got these swollen lips. Uh, she's got a bit of a beetled brow, freckles all over her face. She is ungainly outside of armor. She looks crazy. Catelyn says she's like grotesque and all this shit and she looked way better in her armor than out of it basically right so we have those moments to the writers rather have those moments to touch on when they're trying to come up with scenes and lines of dialogue and character arcs over the season for this show we don't really have those so that's what i mean when i said allison is going to be greatly misinterpreted unless they get her character right but one thing i've noticed that she was one of the last people with not only 
Viserys, right, when he dies, right, she was the last person who saw King Jaehaerys, the old king, alive. Towards the end of his life, he actually thought that Alicent was his daughter, Sira, who had ran away across a narrow sea, which sure, sort of shows you that he was a bit senile. Alicent, uh, the way that we've seen her pictured in the TV show and the official art that George R. R. Martin has commissioned for his story, doesn't really look anything like her. So it sort of just hints that Jaehaerys was a bit senile towards the end. But anyway... It's mentioned that specifically the night that Jaehaerys dies, he, uh, Alicent, is reading him one of his favorite stories. And then eventually, uh, before King Viserys' first wife, Emma Arryn, dies, it's mentioned, right, in rumors that he, that she used to sleep with King Viserys. And that even though they weren't married yet, they were very much promiscuid with each other together, right? They were fucking while Queen Emma Eyre was still alive. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rhaenyra somehow finds out about this, and that's what sort of drives a wedge even further in between her and Alicent. Like, obviously, when she goes to try to slash and uh, cut Lucerys' eye out because Aemon's eye is cut out by Lucerys because they fight over him stealing Vagar. So I wouldn't be surprised if once Alicent marries King Viserys, they're still somewhat cool, but then someone like Mushroom maybe mentions how you know, they used to sleep together, and obviously, uh, Rhaenyra would be offended that her mother was being cheated on, right? And she would obviously go to hating Alicent even more. But one thing of note here is that Alicent, if done correctly, she will be one of the most innocent people at the end of this story. Like, she survives all the way past all the other main characters die, right? But she is just following the laws of Westeros, established tradition, meaning that whoever you are, whether you are a lord of the Vale, or whether you're king of the north, up, up north, right? Your oldest male heir will get the crown. Regardless of who it is, it could be your brother's son, but if they are the next in line, like if, if there's older females, that are direct descendants of the person who was previously established, they will get skipped over in favor of a male heir, right? Allison knew this. She spent time with Jaehaerys. This is how she's going, this is what she's going to use to convince, uh, you know, remnants of the Viserys to small council that she's right. Because technically, she is, right? Like, everybody's like, oh yeah, she's gonna be like Cersei. She's gonna go batshit crazy. That's not actually the case. Rhaenyra is the one who turns out the most like Cersei. Like, she thinks that Corlys the Sea Snake is uh, betraying her multiple times. Like, honestly, after Prince Daemon dies, the Sea Snake's loyalties are questionable, but that's because she's already tried to kill, like, his heirs. Like, she just doesn't trust anyone around her, and eventually, even the deaths of her children stop affecting Rainier. Alicent, on the other hand, is kind of more sane, in a sense. Debate me down below in the comment section. I'm looking forward to this. All right, now, I feel like this is a good point to wrap this video up. I didn't want it to be too, too long and take up too much of your time. If you enjoy these, please, massive, uh, massive favor by slapping a like on. Like, the like goal is going to be 420. Also, make sure you subscribe. And then, special thank you to these individuals right here. They are all members of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash your reviews. And a special thank you to you for watching this video. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so, so much again. My name's Mark, and this has been Sir Hunt's Reviews. I don't know.